Welcome back. In our previous tutorial, we look at workbook, worksheet, cells, rows, and columns. So in this tutorial, we are going to look at data entry and formatting. So without wasting much time, let's start. Now, assuming we have a company, okay, and we want to enter data on maybe information of employees. Let's say first we have employee ID, just like student ID. Let's say name, name of employee. Okay, then let's say um, department. The department of each employee, okay, so department, then job title, so let's say job title, job title, then employment date or high date, the date you were hired, okay, or the date you were employed, and then the employee salary, so we'll be entering their information under each title, okay, so before we start, it's important we save this workbook to avoid the loss of data. So to save this workbook, you click on file, then you use save or save as. So when you click on it, so you can click on browse to select a particular location. But I want to save mine in a folder called P in document. So I click on it. So after clicking on it, then you come to where the written file name and give it a name. Let's say the file is for employees employees of xyz let's say limited so you leave the type as excel workbook and then you save it so you have it saved and when you look at the top here you realize that initially it was book four but now it has changed to employees of xyz ltv also i can rename this worksheet as i did in the previous tutorial so let me rename it as um employee info okay emp info something like that or you can leave it originally as it is as sheet one okay so let's proceed now this is employee id let me click on this and then expand it to show you too. as we go forward i'll show you better way to expand each column okay but for beginning, let's just take it this way, okay. Then, department, I want it to show very well, so I click on the column C, and then come to the tip here, and expand it more. You see that? Let's say the first employee's ID is, let's say, EM0001. That's the first employee's ID. Let's say the name of the first employee is um, John, John, Let's say Benson. John Benson, yeah. Let's assume it's in finance. Okay. Finance. And then his job title, let's assume it's um let's say financial analyst. And then the date he was employed. If you're going to enter date in Excel, please come with the month first, before the day, before the year. Assuming he was employed on let's say 14th July 2023. So we'll make it uh the month first, okay, so July is 7, so 7 forward slash 14 forward slash 2023, so 14th July 2023, okay, and then let's assume the salary is 5,200, okay, so that's the first employee, let's see the second employee, let's say the second employee is EM0002. Okay, that's the second employee. So let's assume the second employee's name is Linda Asari. Okay, something like that. Then the department. Let's assume she is in um, HR. And then the job title is HR manager. And then she was employed on 24th January 2023. So we are going to make it January 1st before the 24th, then before the 2023. Okay. Then let's assume your salary is okay. Now let's go to the next person. Now there's something called autofill in Excel. Okay. Now instead of entering the EM0003, EM004 continuously for the other employees, you can use autofill method for the others. Let's say we have actually eight employees, so we start at nine. To so use the autofill, you can click on the first one here. When you click on the first one, 
Then you drag it to the second to select the two together. After selecting the two together, then you come to the tip here. Okay, the tip. That's the right. The bottom right, the tip. You see that it has changed to black. Initially it was white. The cursor was white initially. But now when you come here, it changes to black. A small plus black. Then you drag it to the last. You drag it from there to the last. So I'm stopping at this place. You see that it's auto phase. It changes to E M Z Z P Z Z Z four Z Z Z five up to Z Z Z eight. You see that. So we call that auto fill. You can do that for numbers as well. Let's say you want to number something. So let's say number one, number two. Instead of numbering the others three, four, five, six, going, you can select the first and the second, and then you come to the tip here and drag it to the last. So let's okay the rest. Interesting, right? Okay, I've done an action that's not part of what we are doing. So I want to undo the action. So you, you click on Control P plus Z to undo. So let me undo the previous ones too. So to save time, let me quickly enter the other information. So that I can proceed with some other important things we'll be looking at in this particular tutorial. So I've been able to enter the other data. You can also do the same. Then let's continue. Now let's click on cell A2. Look at the box here, the format here. You see that it's on general. But when you come to the date, you see that it has changed to date. You can even change the format of the date. When you click on the arrow beside the box, and you come down, you see we have short date and long date. Now, which date is that? 14 July 2023, isn't it? You see that it's written there. So we can convert it to long date. So when I click on it, it will convert this to a long date and you can do it for others as well but i don't want long date so let me just undo this action to undo an action you use control plus z you click them together to undo an action that you've done earlier let's come to salary now before going there let me do something for you to see when you come to the title where the salary is let's make the salary be in ghana city okay now if the title has into bracket Ghana cities, what that means is that each figure under this are all in Ghana cities. So let's come to this number, 5,400. Now let's click on the arrow here. Now, when we make it number, look at how it has changed. It has changed to 5,400.00. You can remove the decimals by clicking on this. You see that it's going. You can remove the decimal totally. You can also bring back the decimals. Maybe if you want it in one decimal place or two decimal places. Now, look at something. On this same arrow, when I change it to currency, you see that it introduces the dollar sign. I don't need dollar. My currency is in Ghana cities. If I should change it to accounting as well, accounting, it also leave it in dollar sign. One thing about this is that we can change it to Ghana cities. Even if we change it to Ghana cities, as long as you have Ghana cities in bracket in the title, there's no need adding the currency symbol to each figure. Unless you do not have the Ghana cities in bracket at the top, then fine. You can add the Ghana cities sign to each figure. Okay. Now let's see how to do that. Let me undo this one first. Now let's select all of them together and do it. Okay. So I'm selecting all together. So, after selecting all together, then you come to the arrow here. You see the dollar sign. The arrow beside the dollar sign. Click on it. When you click on it, then you come down to more accounting formats. After clicking on more accounting formats, this box will display. Then, look at where the written symbol. You can edit it to, you can type GH. As soon as you type GH, you see all currency starting with GA to come. You see? So you see GHC, GHS. You can choose either of them. I've seen people using GHS for Ghana cities. I've seen people using GHC for Ghana, Ghana cities. Okay. So I want to use GHC. Okay. So let me click on GHC. Then I've selected it. I should be in two decimal places. I can decide to make it one decimal place as well. I can also decide to make it zero decimal place. But let me leave it in two decimal places. So I click OK. 
after thinking, okay, you see that the whole thing has changed, right? But if you are leaving it in this method, there's no need bringing Ghana CDs in the title. Okay, if you are leaving it in this format, there's no need putting Ghana CDs in the title. Unless you want to leave it in each rural state, fine, you can bring the Ghana CDs. So let me undo the action. So I'm back to this state. It is nicer to use comma style. For instance, like 5,400, you can write it as 5,400. Okay, so let me select all together. After selecting them, I'm, I'm trying to introduce the comma. So to introduce the comma, look at a comma here. Have you seen that? Click on it. When you click on it, you introduce the comma to each of them, including the decimal places. You can decide to remove the decimal places by reducing the decimals here. Decrease decimals. You see, you can decide to remove the decimals. You can also decide to allow the decimals be. Okay. Now, whatever you are doing, try to be saving it so that you don't lose information. There's no need going to the file anymore after saving it for the first time. You can just use this save button at the top here. Have you seen that? You can click on it. Or whenever you update it with some new information, you can hit on Control plus S. It will save. Okay. Now, let's proceed. Now, look at this employee, name, department, job title, high date, and salary. We can board in them to make them look unique or different from the main information. You can click on the first one and then click on this board here. You see it? B. It's written as B. You click on it. It will board in it and make it look different from the others. Have you seen that? And you can do that for this as well. You can do it for each of them. Okay. Now, instead of doing them one by one, you can do them together. Now, to do them together, let me undo the ones I've done before. So, let me undo the action. Now, to do that, you click on the first. You click on the first. Then, you drag it to the last. After dragging, then, you click on the board. You see that it has bolded all of them. You see that. So, that's how to use board. And then, we also have another one called italic. Or before I proceed, the shortcut for board is Control plus B. So when you hit on Control plus B together, it will go in it. Then Control plus Z, it will undo the action. If I want to undo, it's not always you use Control plus Z. Look at the arrow at the top here. Look at it. In case you have it on your Excel, you can use it to undo something as well. It's not only Control plus Z. Just as we have the board symbol here, and also, you can use Control plus B for it. Okay. Then, we also call something italic. You you guys use it on your WhatsApp when you are chatting. You make something italic, you make it bold and the like. So, we can make this italic. You see that? You can bold in it. You can make it italic. You can also underline. You see that? To underline them individually. You see? But I don't want the underline. There are so many other things you can do to also come to full color. This place. When you click on the arrow beside it, you can change the color of the fill. You see that? You see that? I can make it yellow. Let me undo. I don't want to make it yellow. You can also change the font color. Okay. You can change the font color. Let me change the font color to, let's say, blue. So I'm going to leave it as blue. I want to leave it that way. Also, you can change the font style. Okay, by coming to this place. So when you click on it, you can change the style. You change it to different style. You see, it has, you see how it has changed. When I place my Tessa on or J you see how it has changed. Look at you can change the style as you can change the style any how you want it to look. Okay. Okay. But I'm going to leave mine as it is. Then you can also change the font size. You can change the font size. So when you click on this arrow, or you can even edit it inside the box by typing the size you want. So you can change the font size. You see that? When I hover on 14, when I come to 18, you see how it's changing? You can change the size however you want it to be. Okay. But let me leave it as it was. Now, there's something too I want you to take note of. Okay. 
And before I do that, let me expand the column for salary. Let me expand it a bit. And then let me expand that update to a little bit. So that you get what I'm talking about. There's something called alignment. Okay. By default, or originally, you see that the ones that are in text format, even though this one is kind of like a number, but it starts with alphabet, so we consider it as text. Now, you see that the ones that are text, John Benson, Finance, HR, all these texts are aligned to the left. Have you seen that? But the ones that are numbers are, by default, aligned to the right. Have you seen that? They didn't align to the left like text. Texts are automatically aligned to the left. But numbers are aligned to the right. Okay. But there are ways in which you can make a number. Okay, align to the left as well. But I won't do that here. In one of our subsequent videos, I'll show you how to do that and when to do that. So I'm ending this here for now. So let me save what I've done. In the next tutorial, we'll look at functions and formula. So collect some different data and practice whatever we treated in this tutorial and the previous one. Okay, thank you.